Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of Mark Herman's Churchill, The Big Three Struggle for Peace. This is the third printing. Uh, this game originally came out, I believe, in 2015, uh, and has since had, this is, like I said, this is the third printing. There's not much that's actually changed in the game, I don't believe, but we are going to go into it, see what you get inside. This is solo friendly. Um, it has it ha does have bots included, and I do know that on Board Game Gulag, they have a, uh, a, a fan created a variant, uh, a script, not a script, well, kind of a scripted bot where you play Churchill and then the uh, the AI controls the other two factions in a more uh, structured way. So uh, with with their own personal goals and stuff. So uh, I played that before in the past. I'm looking forward to playing it again. So let's first open the box and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos. Be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, let's crack this one open. I have played Churchill before. I think it's probably the first edition, so the uh, uh, just never did an unboxing of it. So we'll see what the third edition brings. First off, we got the rules of play. Second edition of the rules of play. So hopefully they fix some of the errata that was in the first edition, and which is now in the second edition, so on and so forth. So we've got a 36 uh, page rule book and it is the typical wonderful GMT quality. The matte finish, full color, very descriptive. Uh, um, very clear as to what the components are and what they do. So, in fact, you only have seven pages of rules here. It says, stop at this point, you have the basic rules and concepts for playing a game of Churchill. We'll follow through the detailed procedures and rules. They've been organized so your procedures are easier to find during play. So it does reference where you need to go look during the game so you can just go find it. You can you get the basics, you know, this is how we're gonna do this, we're gonna bid on this. Uh, issue and so on and so forth and now once we've done that we can look up the the exceptions so that's really cool so ultimately uh, we have 24 pages of rules well we have 22 pages of rules no let's go back we have 17 pages of rules page 18 starts scenarios because you don't have to play all of the uh, the meetings um, at once which is a long game you can play a shortened version uh, there's variant for secret agenda. There is also the solitaire rules for, for running the bot. So, and those take up some of the space as well. So then when you get to the end, you get to page 24, you've got appendices, you got the glossary, the examples of play, the historical issue, appendix and background, designers, notes, credits, and the index. So that's a uh, pretty tight rule set there. And it's not small print either. So it's uh, it's pretty easy to learn. So, all right. So we have one rule book. It's awesome. And then we have stickers. We have pretty pretty stickers. So we have Mr. Churchill looking all pretty, and then FDR looking all happy, and then Stalin looking all Stalin-y. So you have these for your blocks, and then you got spares, and then we've got spares on the side too. So we have UK box, US box, USR box. Very cool. No stickers, which means that we have blocks obviously coming up under all this goodness. And then you have your sequence of play, your uh, player reference card. And here there are three. This is a one to three player game. So you get three of the identical reference cards. They are double width. They show how to run the bot, Roosevelt bot, Churchill bot, Stalin bot. And then the sequence of play and the victory point schedule and the end game conditions. So there we go. Then we have our counters slash markers. And they are pre-rounded, easy to punch, very thick, good quality. These are markers for your issues, for uh, you know, various delegations, uh, your naval positions, production positions, conference winners, so on and so forth. One sheet of counters. And then we've got 
of the Churchill game board and we will open that up and take a look at that shortly and then we have tiddlywinks now we have clear plastic chips and all the colors got a red in there too red blue and yellow you get a set of those and then it's kind of red, blue, and green, I guess. It looks, it looks kind of yellow depending on the light, the way it's hitting the light. I think I'm getting an orange color. And then we've got six dice, red, blue, and green. These are great. These are photographer's favorite colors. All right. Let's see who wins the, the battle here. All right. So the U.S. got five. And the UK got four. Oh, Stalin got six. So Stalin won that one. That's the way it works. And that's not how the game plays, fortunately. Then we have a 10 sided die that was not put in a bag. It was just shipped all by itself. And it works. And so the nine won. All right, we do have a bag of bags, GMT trademark. And then we got our wooden pieces that we're going to put those stickers on. All right. And then the smaller wooden pieces, and the we got cylinders and pawns and circles and small cylinders and big cylinders, a whole bunch of goodness in here. And there are obviously the player colors and the master colors here. They're black. Got some brown ones too for the shoes. So that. and then we have our decks of cards, and they are divided into the conference deck what you're bidding on and then the staff decks and these are for each of the three uh, countries so we got the Stalin deck the Churchill deck and the Roosevelt deck or as they want to call it the USSR the UK the USA and blah, blah 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 and so when they say staff they truly mean staff these are the representatives that you're going to send to the different uh, to do your bidding And the Stalin is active in the conference, minus two strength, so on and so forth. So this is a really awesome game. It actually really is. I really enjoyed it when I played it before. I'm looking forward to playing it again, full solo. And as I mentioned, there is on uh, Board Game Gulag, there is that uh, that other uh, fan created. I wish he had created the uh, other uh, the other factions where you could play the U.S. or the U.S.S.R. as well. But as it is. Um, it's set up and you just play Churchill and that's fine because the game's Churchill and so I want to play Churchill because he's the best of the three of these guys but uh, um, uh, it would be nice to be able to play those other ones so let's um, the cards are pretty much the same and let's go to the blog as we'll look at the uh, at the uh, conference deck as well so these have the details of the various conferences that you're going to be playing and they're 1 through 10 and there are variants of each one, so there's three for each one. So Montgomery must use one production for offensive in the Mediterranean theater. Uh, BC nice now damaged. Romance convoys plus one USSR production and public pressure must use two production in Pacific theater. I don't remember exactly how this works, but they get the Simul Conference, the Trident Conference, Quadrant Conference, Sextant Conference, Eureka Conference, PM Conference, Octagon Conference, Tolstoy Conference in Moscow, and the Argonaut in Yalta, and the Terminal Conference in Potsdam, as the war is over, or at least the war in Europe is over. All right, so you get those. So now let's scroll, let's open the board and take a look at that. All right, so looking at the board for here for Churchill, here you have the conference table uh, set up, the display where you have the issues and you're trying to draw the issues to your uh, particular leader. Uh, these are the different issues in play. The political military table, your record track. Move the marker back to zero for scores of 75 or more. And then over on this side, so this is what's going on at the conference, and then this is what's going on in the 
in the world in the different theaters. So it's a military display. Here's your European theater focused on moving toward Germany, Western, and Eastern, the Med, the Arctic. And then down here we have the Pacific theater because you got to deal with everything else moving toward Japan, the Far East, uh, Central Pacific, Southwest Pacific, and uh, China, Burma, India theater all moving toward Japan. And here's your key, you got amphibious spaces, which means something in B-29 space, obviously specific, specific colony, European space, European colonies. So this applies to this theater as well as this theater. It's a big board. It's uh, eight panels by 22, it's 22 by 34. That's right. So it's a normal, normal map. But fortunately, the good thing is for playing solo, it is uh, in landscape mode. So it's a lot easier for you to reach everything instead of it being like some of the games it goes in portrait mode and stuff gets far away at the top. Very well designed. So let's go back if Mr. Churchill allows and recap everything you get in the box. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Churchill the third edition, third printing, excuse me. You're gonna get a big bag of wooden pieces. You're gonna get a little bag of clear chips. You're gonna get a baggie of baggies. You're gonna get six, six sided dice, two each of three colors, and UK won that one. You're gonna get a 10 sided die. Number nine, always rolls nine. You're going to get four decks of cards three staff decks and the conference deck. You're going to get that nice game board we just took a look at. You're going to get one sheet of pre-rounded, easy to punch counters, three player aids with bot instructions, a sheet of stickers for your blocks, and that 36 page easy to read rule book. And that's everything that comes in Mark Herman's Churchill from GMT Games and obviously designed by Mark Herman. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!